good day we'll be discussing the first part of the assessing financial performance which will be focused on the creation and the composition of the major financial statements that business and corporations should have first let's define financial statements financial statements are written records that convey the business activities and the financial performance of the company for the investors and for the owners of the company to have a clear grasp of how the company is doing we're going to need a set of financial statement to tell us our financial position our performance and the growth of the business with that we have the three major financial statements that every corporation or every business needs we have the balance sheet the income statement and the cash flows of course, to be able to generate a balance sheet, an income statement, and a cash flow statement, we have to go through the basics of bookkeeping. So we will go through journalizing, posting, or posting in the ledger, the trial balance, and then we're going to have the income statement, the changes in equity, the balance sheet, the cash flows, and we will be closing entries. But since this is a course in financial management, we will be focusing on only the generation of the income statements from the trial balance. We will not delve into the journalization and the posting of the different business transactions. For our discussion, we will be using this generated trial balance of Enterprises 5.0. Let's get started. The first that we'll discuss is the income statement. The income statement is also known as the profit and loss statement it generates it summarizes all of the income accounts and also the expense accounts and contrast them with one another so that we could get a net profit or a net loss from these amounts the components that belong in the income statement the accounts that exist there are what we call the profit and expense and the gains and the losses we acquire profit and expense from our primary operations while gains and losses we acquire from non-primary operations. What do we mean by primary operations? It means that this is a business bread and butter. So if the business is focused on merchandising, on retailing, all of the profits and expenses associated with the retailing or the merchandising or the production of these things, these are your profits and expenses. However, when secondary, uh, secondary operations come, for example, we get to do a sale of properties or we get to experience lawsuits or other things that be damaging for the business but not necessarily in our primary operations not in the mix of retailing and merchandising then we classify those as gains and losses and the primary ones as profit and expense we construct the income statement by number one we put the header number two we present all the income accounts so everything sales income service income since all of these are uh, income accounts we present them all together and we get its total next we present all the expense accounts and there these are your salaries your um, wages purchases etc we also get the total of these accounts and then we compute for the net income or the net loss by subtracting the expense accounts to the income accounts if we generate a negative amount that means our expense exceeds our income and therefore we have a net loss if our income accounts and our expense accounts are balanced therefore we reach what we call a break-even point where there's no income and there's no loss so we'll use this trial balance to generate the income statement so this is the generated income statement and we apply the steps number one we create a heading the heading should include the name of the business what the income statement of course whatever kind of statement that it is whatever kind of financial statement we should input that there and a date ending next we tabulate and present the income accounts we total them and then we present the expense accounts and we total them as well after that we generate the net income by subtracting the expenses to the gross income that we generated so 119,000 
minus 67,586, we got 51,414 as the net income. If these values are reversed, if the expenses is 119,000 and this and the income and the income is the 67,586, it would be a negative 551,414 and that would be a net loss. Next we have the statement of changes in equity. Though it is not an essential part of the major financial statements, the changes in equity reconciles the beginning and the ending balance of the business equity during a specific period. It is composed of the net income, the retained earnings, the dividends, the withdrawals. So how do we construct a statement of changes in equity? Number one, we put a header. Number two, we add all the capital accounts and the net income. Number three, we deduct any withdrawals or dividends paid. So the formula on getting the ending balance of the capital or the equity accounts is the initial capital or equity account plus the net income less the dividends or withdrawals. We'll still be using the same example and we'll generate this statement. So number one, we set up a heading. Number two, we present all the capital accounts. We have the initial capital. If we do have an additional capital during the period, if we took out a loan and it happened to be additional financing, additional capital for the business, we put it there. And then we also add the net income because the net income usually gives us the retained earnings part. If we do have a separate account for retained earnings, it is considered a part of the capital. After that, we deduct any withdrawals, any deductions from the equity. So if we happen to issue dividends, we deduct them as well. Drawings, of course, we deduct them too. And we will get by subtracting the withdrawals to the capital we get the capital ending. So 351,414 less 25,000 is equal to 326,414 pesos. Now we have the balance sheet. The balance sheet or the statement of financial position gives us an outline of the assets, the liabilities, and the equity and tells the investors and tells the owners where we are standing in terms of cash and how we manage the business's financial condition. It is composed of, of course, the assets, liabilities, and equity. Under assets, we have the current assets and the non-current assets. Current assets meaning this is what we use for the working capital, easily liquidated assets. The non-current assets are your fixed assets or the long-term assets. These are your buildings, your um, heavy equipment, machineries, plants, real estate. Next we have on liabilities. Current liabilities meaning it's a short term. So uh, by the definition in bookkeeping, a short term liability should be paid within a year. Long term liabilities exceed a year in terms of payment. Then we have our equity accounts. We have the equity account or the capital account. We also have the retained earnings account. How do we construct a balance sheet? Number one, we set up a heading. Number two, we add all the values of the asset accounts. We present them and then we add them. Number three, we present the liabilities and the equity accounts. Get the sum of the liabilities and the equity individually and then add both of them. Number four, we check the total of the assets and the combined liability and equity accounts if they are equal. If they are not equal, it means there have been an error in the bookkeeping cycle. So number one, we set the heading up. Number two, we set the assets. If you can see the, the distribution of the assets, we have first the current assets, the ones that are easily liquidated on the top of the financial statement and it is followed by the non-current assets or the not so easily liquidated parts. Number three, we have the liabilities and the equity. 
again the ones with easy liquidation we put on the top so the current liabilities take part of the upper of the upper part and then followed by the long term liabilities and then the owner's equity number 4 we total the asset account and the liability and the equity account so as we can see from here their totals are both 441,333 pesos last of the financial statements that we're about to discuss is the cash flow statement the cash flow statement is a summarization of the cash flow of how the cash have been moving along in the business and where it is being invested where it is being placed and it tells the corporation and it tells the shareholders and the investors on how well the company manages its finances and its obligations the composition of the cash flow statement is divided into three we have the operating activities the investing activities and the financing activities operating activities meaning that involving of the working capital on how the payment of obligations the cash and receivables investing activities means what we buy on the long term capital budgeting number three is financing activities any additional capital or equity accounts and uh, dividends or withdrawals made so we construct it by putting a heading first we present the operating activities we present the investing activities and the financing activities after that we add all the values of all of the financial activities and make sure that the total that we get for cash the value for cash should match the cash account that we have in the trial balance first let's discuss what belongs in the operating activities we have here the net income we also have um, the changes in the working capital so the increase and decrease in accounts receivable or the accounts payable also the inventory changes in inventory in investing activities this are we have the capital budgeting and these things are always uh, negative last we have the financing activities and these are your increase or decrease in the capital accounts your loans your stocks or your dividends if there is an increase in capital that is a positive and if there is a decrease in capital which happens when we do a withdrawal or we issue dividends that is a negative the sum of the operating investing and financing activities who have to be generated a cash account and it should be in sync it should be equal to the cash account that we have at the end of the period or what we have on the trial balance we will still be using the same problem and we generated this cash flow statement now first we discuss its steps number one we put a heading cash flow statement should be there number two is the operating activities now let's discuss this at length now all of the net income is positive since we put money into the business and then we reverse the depreciation because there is a depreciation account factored into our net income now why would we reverse depreciation in this case because depreciation is a non-cash value we didn't um, although it's an expense we didn't actually distribute or dispense money for this depreciation it is only a deduction for the value of a investment so whenever we have a depreciation account it should always be reversed number two we discussed the changes in working capital we have increase in accounts payable which is 60,000 we have increase in accounts payable 114,919 and we have prepaid expenses of 71,000 prepaid expenses are always negative since they are still not credited as expenses of the business accounts receivable if there is an increase in accounts receivable it's negative because we still do not have the cash value of that although its cash value is already indicated on the sales account if there is a decrease in accounts receivable therefore we already received cash it is a positive account in this if we have an increase in accounts payable 
because we still hold on to the cash we still uh, withheld paying for whatever we owe we leave it positive because we still have the cash if it is a decrease in accounts payable if we let go of the cash we have to deduct it from our cash flow statement from the operating activity since we already let go of the cash so increase in accounts receivable negative decrease in accounts receivable positive increase in accounts payable positive decrease in accounts payable negative and prepaid expenses always negative the prepaid expenses are usually um, adjusted on the ending on the closing entries number two that's number two number three we discuss the investing activ activities as we have said it is always a negative value because all of the income that was supposed to be generated from these computer equipment say will be directed on the operating activity so all investing activities are negative because we always give out and dispense cash number three we have the financing activities this is your capital your drawing it could be dividends account so any changes in here on the capital account so 300,000 that's always positive because that's money that exists in the business and the drawing account or the dividend account is negative because we gave that um, that amount out to shareholders or to people after that we take the sum of these three thirty seven thousand plus negative one hundred thousand plus two hundred seventy five thousand and we get two hundred twelve thousand and that is the same as the cash account and that is the same as the cash account in the trial balance so therefore the cash flow statement is correct <laughs>